All right, um, we're starting to see a pretty big problem here with iPhone 10s, 10s, 10s Max boot looping, and essentially it boot loops after two to three minutes, and everything seems to be fine. It's charging at a good amount of amps, and but uh, for some reason it just boot loops. And um, I'm gonna kind of tell you guys what I've what I've uh, discovered. Um, just through some searching on Facebook groups and stuff like that and just some testing on my own. Um, so here, this is an iPhone 10 right here that's going to boot loop in whatever, probably a minute or so. And it's charging at 0.7 amps right now, uh, which is actually not normal. should be going a little bit higher than that. So I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but anyways, because the battery's dead. Um, so the first thing that I found after searching one of the micro soldering Facebook groups is that the charge port actually has to be plugged in in order for this thing to um, for this thing to uh, not boot loop. So basically, if you if you're if you're testing this this uh, the logic board here, and you just there you go, so it just boot looped, so it just rebooted. And basically, if you're troubleshooting the iPhone 10, 10s, 10s Max, and you leave the charge port unplugged with just the battery. It's going to boot loop after two, three minutes. Okay, that's number one. So you have to have the charge port plugged in. And I've already done some testing, and um, I put the let's see, I put a vibration motor and the the loudspeaker, and neither of those things had an effect on the boot looping. So so whether they were plugged or unplugged, it doesn't really matter. Um, that has nothing to do with the boot looping. Okay, I was thinking that maybe it was like. I was thinking that maybe that it had something to do with uh, maybe like the CPU was checking checking the um, vibration motor, the haptic motor, uh, you know, so that it doesn't boot loop. Because I think the vibration had the haptic sensor has some sort of uh, code in it or something like that. I think because I see these devices that can reprogram it or something. So I don't under really fully understand that. But anyways, uh, I've determined that those two things has has nothing no relevancy on this boot loop issue okay so the second issue is that uh, mobile centrics which is pretty much the biggest supplier of of uh, parts right now in the US uh, probably global well I don't know if it's globally probably probably not globally but definitely in the US they're one of the big suppliers and I found, I found out that their their stupid charge ports are actually causing some issues. Um, I mean, uh, you know, after trying two or three premium charge ports in the XS 10s, they still boot loop. So they are. I'm gonna re return these things, but they they trolled me for a little bit, you know. And, and it wasn't. And not everybody's gonna have OEM ports, right? So you buy these things from Mobile Centrics, you know, thinking that they work and and uh, you know you install them and and they do work initially you know unless you waited three minutes for this thing to boot loop um, so you're gonna install them and then boom they just start boot looping and your customer says oh man they're boot looping you know and and anyways um, so the best thing to do right now is basically just try it on a get some OEM frames uh, with OEM ports and try try the and it has to be a known good a good one you know because I actually have um, three 10s frames here with the original. Well, one's with an original port. One looks like it was actually changed, which I didn't notice, and and it was it boot looped. Yeah. So so anyways, so that really trolled me for a long time. Um, you know, I tested it with an OEM frame supposedly, and then two mobile centrics charge ports, and I was like, there's no way it's a charge port, you know. And uh, I and I even disconnected the charge port, so I was like, "There's no way it's the charge port, right? That's causing the boot loop." And sure enough, once I once I put the logic board into an OEM frame that I knew was working with OEM charge port, it was working fine. Okay, so <laughs> problem solved. Um, okay, so this guy said he replaced the charge port, replaced the battery, and and it's boot looping now. Okay, so and here's the other thing. I've also seen it where a bad battery would cause the boot loop as well. <laughs> so uh, there's multiple factors in here. Okay, one is charge port. Make sure you plug it in. Make sure it's um, you know I haven't found an aftermarket one that that works. No, that's not true. That's not true. I do have a, a 10 a 10s max charge port here. Mobile Centrics Premium. 
that actually does work. Um, that does not cause the boot loop problem. So I, I don't know exactly what's causing this boot loop problem right now. And and here's the other thing. I've also there are some OEM charge ports that um, maybe were water damaged that are that are boot looping as well. So anyways uh, what I'm getting at is that just make sure you have some charge ports that you know are working fine with other with multiple logic boards, okay? When you're testing these things, otherwise you're gonna get in, run into this boot loop problem and it's gonna freaking cause you major grief as it has uh, me. So, um, so it's it's actually a big problem and uh, I don't think everybody knows the full extent of it. Um, Mainly because, you know, if you disconnect the charge board and it's still boot loop and you're like, okay, it's not the charge board then, you know, but it turns out that the charge board has, has to be plugged in, which um, someone figured out on one of the Facebook groups, okay? So with this one, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, p I'm gonna take the, f take the logic board out, stick it into my frame, my OEM frame, and, and then see if it boot loops. If it doesn't boot loop, then I know that it's either the battery or the charge board that this guy replaced that's causing, causing the problem. So the next thing I'll do is I'll just pump a battery into it and, uh, see if that still boot loops. And if it's not, then I'll say, okay, the battery's fine for the most part. And then I'll stick, um, I'll see if I can find the OEM charge port, or maybe even use mobile centrics one to see if um, see if that works or not. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do with this phone. <clears throat> All right, so I have an OEM frame here, and I think I'm going to try it with multiple different charge ports and see how it goes. I, I have not been able to confirm whether this charge port actually works or not. Um, so it's so anyways, if it boot loops, then it's possible that it could be this frame. So this is kind of like my first test into see if this frame is good or not, which I, I should probably just use one that works fine. Okay, so battery charge port. I'm just gonna plug. Power power button charge port screen and yeah, that is it. Okay, so battery screen power button charge port. The problem is we have to wait two to three minutes every time we do this. <laughs> so it's kind of stupid. All right. Well, I'm gonna disable. I'm gonna disable this for now. I mean, I'm gonna turn this off until it boots up, and I'll wait for like two minutes, and I'll turn it back on, and you can you guys can stare at this damn screen until it reboots, or if it reboots. All right. So I finally booted up, and I started the timer. It's at 45 seconds now. Uh, we'll see when it actually reboots, but I think it's somewhere between two three minutes. <clears throat> All right, so we're at almost three minutes now, and it hasn't rebooted yet. And this is my supposedly OEM frame and OEM battery. I'm pretty sure it is, but I haven't been able to confirm it. So I think it's safe to say that if we can go past about five, five minutes, then you know this thing's not rebooting anymore. So we can say that it is most likely the uh, the charge port of the battery that he replaced that's causing this issue. So next step would be to isolate whether it's one or both of those things, and and that's it really so I guess I'll just kind of sit here for a little bit and I'm gonna do some other things uh, while this thing is going and we shall see how it goes let's see I need a box <coughs> oh. alright let's see Four minutes. <clears throat> Four minutes, no reboot. I think we're doing pretty good. Once it gets to five minutes, if it's not rebooting, then we know what the issue is. I, I don't I don't think it's gonna reboot, but
soon as I hit five minutes, I'm just cutting it, cutting it loose. And then we will, let's see, what are we going to do first? Let's see, uh, I think I'll stick, let's see, what should I do first? Uh, maybe I'll use, well, his battery's kind of glued in here. That really sucks. I have to think about that. Alright, so we're just going to assume that this has fixed the issue, okay? We're charging at a full 2 amps now, too. And before, we were only charging at uh, 0.7 amps, so possibly one or both of his um, charge port or battery. Okay, so we're going to isolate it somehow now. Let me think about it for a little bit. Alright, so it's been on for about, I don't know, 15 minutes now, just because I was doing something. And it, all it is is this is a mobile centric charge port here. I believe this is probably premium mobile centric charge port, and it, it is charging at a full two amps right now. So I think the battery's fine. It's not boot looping. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and replace charge port, and and that'll be the end of this uh, repair, I believe. So so uh, let's see. Step one: um, take the logic board out, put it into a known good housing with an OEM port, or I guess you can probably you probably don't even need to do that. I guess I, I guess you could have. Probably just use use the mobile centrix uh, charge port, one that you know works, okay. And uh, so if that works, then you just go ahead and replace it. You know, um, number two is make sure that the battery is not causing the issue, which I've seen as well. Sometimes the um, the air, air the air speaker flex causes a boot loop too. So just basically just disconnect everything except for the charge port battery. And uh, I I like to leave the power button on so I can turn it on. Um, so anyways, if you're experiencing a, a boot loop issue um, on the X, the 10s and the 10s Max, then those are kind of the troubleshooting steps, all right? And don't 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 assume that the charge port is good. That's, that was my mistake, <laughs> which which cost me a few days of time. Uh, and then don't also don't assume that the battery is good, all right? All right, thanks for watching. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our videos on YouTube. Um, you know, when I started micro soldering about three or four years ago, maybe about three years ago, um, I started because I ended up breaking someone's phone during a repair. Yeah, this was back in the days of the iPhone 5C, and as I was disconnecting the battery, I accidentally pried off one of the little components next to the battery connector. So my options were to try to try to fix it or to buy buy the customer a new phone and and that's kind of what started this journey well fast forward three years later um, we have a website now microsoldering.com and we also have an online training course um, it's ninety nine ninety nine if you buy it through our website and we go over just about everything that you need to know to get started on your micro soldering journey um, it's uh, kind of sectioned out into about four parts and uh, the first part we just kind of go over all the basics and tools how to use diode mode um, and what kind of tools and equipment to buy and stuff like that the second part we talk a little bit about ZXW tools and in the third part we go over four of the most common repairs something this should be four common repairs. so it's basically no touch no backlight no power and we just added a section for audio IC on the iPhone 7 and 7 plus and then the last part is data recovery no boot and just kind of a very basic um, uh, discussion about data recovery so if you want to buy it just go to microsoldering.com click on store shop and then you'll come to this um, this uh, page right here just click on buy at Udemy and that'll take you to Udemy where our course is hosted um, and you can even preview some videos of the course and see if you like it or not and right now it's we're at four and a half hours and we're adding to it um, as much as we can so uh, just make sure you go through our website otherwise the cost is a little bit higher alright thanks for watching